Hello Driving Intelligence Community. In this video, I'm going to continue to share my experiments targeted at improving the fuel economy of an older vehicle, and specifically my 2002 10th generation F-150 4x4 with a 5.4 two valve engine. Now one of the themes of my channel is reclamation, whether that be things that people throw away or to improve what I've got, and specifically my older vehicles. My newest vehicle is a 2006 Cadillac CTSV. And I'd rather put money into upgrading all of those vehicles than spending tens of thousands of dollars on a new vehicle, which in my case would cost at least $50,000 to get a new truck or to get what I really want, which is a Raptor R at $150,000. It's just not going to happen. So my investments will improve fuel economy, comfort, and convenience in this vehicle. Although the subject of this video is a Ford F-150, these changes that I've made through the years can be applied to the Ford Expedition or F-250 with the 5.4 or 4.62 valve engine, but generally can be applied across all manufacturers. That would be G GM, Chevrolet, Toyota, Nissan, whatever it may be. The purpose of this video is to talk about oxygen sensors. Now, I've seen some hype out there about how oxygen sensors as they age can impact fuel economy. Well, I went into the internet and I did an internet search that says how often to replace oxygen sensors. The first thing I saw is it is recommended to change oxygen sensors every 60 to 90,000 miles. And there was another thread that said older vehicles should have oxygen sensors replaced every 30 to 50,000 miles and newer vehicles requiring a change every 100,000 miles. Well, my F-150 has 80,000 miles on the upstream oxygen sensors, and I decided to change one of those oxygen sensors out to see if there was any impact on fuel economy. I've achieved almost 23 miles per gallon at steady state speeds over 70 miles per hour with this vehicle, with all the changes I made over the past three years, until I decided to be cool and put some big, heavy tires and wheels on there. Although they're the same diameter, they're uh, much heavier, it impacted fuel economy by over 10%, and obviously that affects the performance of the vehicle as well. So this made me realize what I want to do to help all of you achieve your fuel, fuel economy goals within budget constraints. I'm going to list my best fuel economy improvements to my worst with the costs associated with that so you can make your own decisions. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to the oxygen sensor I use for this F-150. And while you're down there, don't forget to give me that thumbs up and comment. Now, I'll quickly go over the operation of the oxygen sensor so you know how it impacts fuel economy. Early emissions requirements had only a single oxygen sensor after the engine, which monitored the performance of the combustion chamber and would actually tell the ECU how to, to change different variables to get as much efficiency out of that fuel air mixture and reduce the hydrocarbons in that exhaust, which was causing pollution. Later emissions requirements added two oxygen sensors. The first one that I've already talked about, which monitors the performance of the engine, but the second one downstream of the catalytic converter monitors the performance of the cat. That way, the ECU on board would know if the catalytic converter was still operating properly. That downstream oxygen sensor doesn't have any impact on engine performance. The one that does have an impact is the upstream. And conventional thinking, if you go to the internet, says that as time goes by and you get miles on your vehicle, heat cycles, etc., that that upstream oxygen sensor will get weak, will slow down, will not spike up and down in terms of voltages as quickly as possible, and therefore affect uh, fuel economy and engine performance. And that's what I want to test today. So after I changed the one oxygen sensor, I monitored the spikes, the up and down voltage spikes, on my OBD sensor and also I did a fuel economy test. I used my typical 50 mile route between Greenville, South Carolina and Atlanta, Georgia on Highway 85. Steady state speeds at 72 miles per hour. Same tune on the engine, same fuel pumps. Now let's see what happened. I noticed absolutely no difference in perceived performance while driving on a highway at 72 miles per hour. Throttle response, engine vacuum, ability to climb highway grades were identical before and after the oxygen sensor change. I also watched the cycling of the oxygen sensors before and after the change and saw no change in cycling or amplitude of the signal. By the way, the downstream sensor for Bank 2 Sensor 2 indicates the catalytic converter is no longer working properly and should be changed. If the catalytic converter was working properly, you would see a smooth curve similar to that for the Bank 1 sensor. The ultimate result we are all waiting for is fuel economy. 
The old oxygen sensor, having seen 80,000 miles, had no impact on fuel economy whatsoever. I believe oxygen sensors last a very long time, especially if the vehicle is well maintained. When I buy a high mileage used vehicle, I replace the upstream oxygen sensor since I don't have a baseline of performance. My recommendation is to monitor your fuel economy and performance. If performance or fuel economy declines, it might be an aging oxygen sensor. However, there are many other issues that can cause a decline in fuel economy. A failed oxygen sensor will cause a check engine light and running diagnostics could provide a code like P0138. However, diagnosing a failed oxygen sensor is beyond the scope of this video. I trust you found this video helpful, so don't forget to like and comment. And until next time, thanks for watching Driving Intelligence.